Hello, my Peace Baptist family. This is Matt Jacobs with your announcements for Sunday, January 24th, 2021. Communion will be served during the morning worship today, so please have your communion elements prepared. Please be praying for Minister Tracy Tiller and the family who has experienced loss at the end of 2020 and most recently experienced the loss of two cousins ages 58 and 82. Be praying for their strength, their peace, and their comfort. For just as each of us have one body with many members and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, through many, form one body and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is encouraged, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Romans 12, 4 through 8. Peace Baptist did not hold a picnic in 2020 where we would have recognized members with the Spirit of Peace Award. So we'd like to take this time to honor those who impressed the Upon the church family the importance of service and perseverance. Amid these unprecedented times and impressed upon us during the COVID-19 pandemic, these individuals have continued to minister and serve the church and community. Please help us in congratulating those involved in ensuring the mission and vision of peace is carried forward as said in Matthew 28 and Acts 2. Peace recognizes the PUSH ministry, the AV ministry, the elders, and those frontline essential duties in the community for their work during 2020. Maria Bates, Tony Bates, Shirley Brame, Tom Brame, Jacob Brame, Tiana Brown, Angela Campbell, Sue Davis, Iva Duran, Evaxi Kenny Duran, Rana Edwards, Karen Griffin, Sharon Howe, Matt Jacobs, Kim Johnson, Mike Latham, Bridget Ridgeway, Devonna Thomas, Tracy Tiller, Nisha Wiley, Aaron Williams, Milton Wingfield, and Kaiser Young. Please arrange to pick up your awards on Saturday, January 30th from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. here at the church. Please be praying for our Peace Baptist family. Be in prayer for Marilyn Crumpton, Elton Vincent and family, Eleanor Hicks and family, the family of Villato Thomas, Ludelia Warren, Mary Brown and family, Deacon Sam Campbell, Terry Fancody, Annie England and family, Deacon Lawrence Cargyle, Talisha Cargyle, Pam McDaniels, John Bankston, Minister Kim Norman, Greg Thomas, Terry Thomas, Shredinia Bryant, Marie Gowdy, Trey Potter, Andrew Lewis and family, Minister Vanessa Thomas's family, and Jordan Bergen, who is the candidate for a heart and liver transplant, Douglas Wynn, who needs, to, who needs a live kidney donor, and please be in prayer for our pastoral search committee. And finally, let's celebrate our January birthdays. Happy birthday to Denise Smith, Vincent Starkey Sr., Misha McDaniels, Lucille McClure, Dorothy Wingfield, Phil Cargill II, Terry Cornett, Kavana Bradley, Lena Johnson, Mary Brown, Daryl Gibson, Cadence Mason, and Laverne Harmon. These have been your announcements for Sunday, January 24th. Enjoy the rest of service. There is nobody greater than God. Praise God for that. We'd like to thank Ivy Baxi and Bridget for those selections, getting us ready for this morning, for this uh, service. I, wa I want to welcome everyone, thank everyone for tuning in. Whether you're watching this on Facebook Live or you listen to this later on, I just like to thank you. I, and I'm just uh, uh, thankful to be in front of you once again. You know, this is my second week in front of you, and I, and I am just excited. As I mentioned last week, Peace Baptist, we started a new sermon series beginning of this year called Becoming a Contagious Christian Community. And in this, in this series, we uh, want to encourage the 21st century, that's us today, 21st century community of believers to go spread the, the gospel and spread, it, uh, spread the gospel of Jesus Christ with the power of the Holy Spirit, just like the first century church did. And our uh, goal is to journey through the book of Acts. We've already uh, preached on Acts 1 and 2, and also last week I preached on chapter 3. Today we'll be coming from Acts chapter 4. But before we get into the scriptures out of Acts chapter 4, let's pray. And we'll read the scripture and we'll just go right into this powerful word. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Father, I just thank you for just allowing us to have your son, Jesus Christ, come down here and, and be our Savior, Father. Father, I just pray that this message that um, is going to be preached today, that's a bold message, a message that... Um, is preached out of courage and boldness, Father. 
Also, Father, I, I pray that the people who are hearing my voice and seeing this uh, video do not see or hear me, but they but they are, uh, um, uh, hear you and see you, Father. And as they um, get this word into their heart, I pray that they are also bold, that they can that it transform their lives, that they can go out and continue to spread this gospel. God's only son providing everlasting life to the world, Father. And Father, we know that there's no other name under this heaven that can save us except for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for him. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. 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 So uh, let's go to Acts chapter four. Once again, Acts chapter four and the scriptures that I will be uh, focused on will be uh, 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 verses five through twenty five through twenty of Acts chapter four. And it reads as follows. And I'll be coming out of the new King James Version. And it says, and it came to pass on the day on the next day that the rulers, elders and scribes, as well as honest and high priests, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priests were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they, they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the, of the people of, of, and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the na name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, he, by, by him, his name, his, his, this man stands here before you all whole. This is the stone which was, was rejected by the builders, which has become the chief cornerstone, nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under the heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could, not, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, what shall we do to these men? For indeed, that a noble miracle has been done through them and is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak, no, they, they speak to no man in this name. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered to them, answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than, than to God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. May the Lord bless the doers of his word. Amen. So if I was to title this sermon, I would title it, which I did title it, Holy Bold Believers. Holy Bold Believers. You see, today in the 21st century, we should be spreading the gospel and boldness. We have to be spreading it in boldness. But I believe the number one reason why we are not bold and not intentional is because of fear. See, fear is powerful. See, it paralyzes us. It controls us. It, 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 it manipulates us. But what we have to understand, we have to understand that God does not look favorably on, on us if we sit silently or if we back down. He does not look favorably upon that because, see, God did not give us the spirit of fear. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, uh, verse 7, it says that, but it says that he gave us power, love, and a sound mind. But then in verse 8 of 2 Timothy chapter 1, it says, therefore. So if God has given us the power of, I mean, if he's given us the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind, verse 8 says, therefore, do not be ashamed of the gospel. He said, don't be ashamed. God is already telling us that we are not supposed to be ashamed and not supposed to have fear. Now, God is loving. God is patient. God is kind. God is slow to anger. We all know that. But God, he does not like to look upon uh, uh, sin. God cannot look upon sin. And there are some things that he cannot tolerate. One of them is is apathy and also unwarranted fear. 
it's unwarranted to fear because God has already given us the spirit of uh, a power. He does not give a spirit of fear. So that's unwarranted. Uh, apathy. Ap Christ already told us in, a, in a revelations that if you are lukewarm, he's going to vomit and spit you out. So God does not want us to have that fear. And if you go into Revelations 21, I, I, I advise you to go to Revelation 21, chapter 8. I mean, uh, uh, the chapter 21, verse 8. The first word that, uh, that is listed because uh, it's a list of things that God cannot tolerate. The first word is cowardly. God does not want us to be scared. God does not want us to be cowards. God, see, our greatest gift, our greatest characteristic as a, as this, as a Christian in the 21st century is boldness. That's our greatest characteristic is boldness. He, cause he's given us this power of fear, uh, this, this power, uh, this power, this, this, the spirit of power. And believers today, spreading the gospel, spreading the kingdom today, we have to be bold and we have to be co courageous. Believers today are believers who will go face to face against, uh, against opposition. They'll go toe to toe against opposition. They'll go head to head against, op against op opposition. That's the way that we have to be. And in, in the first century church, they did that. And if we recap in, uh, in, in Acts chapter 1, 2, and 3, in Acts chapter 1, Jesus spoke to the disciples. He said that I'm going to give you the power. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit that will give you the power to witness about me. In chapter 2, we see that, that the, 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 the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit, plus 3,000 others. And then in Acts chapter 3, we see Peter go out and he spreads the gospel. He spreads the gospel. And then... Now we're in chapter four. We're in chapter four. And after Peter has spread the gospel, he, he, he preached on Solomon's porch about God's only son providing everlasting life. We, we see that 5,000 men, and they mentioned just 5,000 men were added, but we know they did not account for the women and the children. So it was approximately 10,000. So 10,000 more souls were, 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 were saved because of what Peter preached on that porch. And then we see that the, the uh, uh, men in power, the powerful men, the powerful Jews uh, got together and they arrested Peter and John. So now Peter and John spends a night in jail. So we uh, are in, in, uh, in, in chapter four. They're in front of this council. They're in front of these powerful men. And Peter, once again, takes this opportunity, takes this situation and makes it a gospel opportunity. Instead of him looking at it as a courtroom, he looks at it as a congregation because he starts spreading the word again. He tells them that this man was healed by Jesus Christ, the one who you, crossed, who you crucified and God rose from the dead. He, he basically makes it an example of, of, of a congregation or example of a gospel situation. And and we should use Peter and John again, like we did last week, use them as an example of how we in the 21st century can be bold and courageous because this gospel, this gospel message is not just good news. This gospel message is urgent news. It's urgent news. And, and we must take every opportunity to share that message. We must make every situation a gospel situation. And I'm here to tell you that when you do that, you will meet opposition. You will meet opposition. Some people are going to try to ridicule you. Some people are going to try to challenge you. Some people are, are going to just ignore you. But there are going to be some people who are going to outright try to stop you from spreading this word. And if we look in, in, this, in these verses, we see in verse 17, these rulers, these powerful men, try to get Peter and John to stop spreading the word. They said that we need to threaten them severely and to stop spreading the word of Jesus Christ. Jesus gave us a command. He gave us the great commission. And Peter and John were told to stop spreading the word. Why in the 21st century, we look at the great commission as a great suggestion, where we are trying to get people to start spreading the word. Peter and John were told to stop. It's not the great suggestion, it's a command. Jesus gave us a command to go out and, 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 and preach, preach the word about him. And he's already given us that power. So how today in the 21st century do we as this uh, Christian community, how can we become bold? How can we become bold believers? Well, today I want to share four characteristics of a bold believer. There's four characteristics of a bold believer. And the first one, the first characteristic of a bold believer is 
A bold believer is empowered by the spirit. A bold believer is empowered by the spirit. And we see that in verse eight. In verse eight, it says "And Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them. OK, now let's look at the scene. We have to take the scene um, into account. So Peter and John were standing in front of the council. This council is around 70 men, powerful men. And today it would be like the, the Supreme Court. So Peter and John are standing in, in the same spot where Jesus stood, where he was falsely tried, where he was falsely convicted by these same men. So Peter and John knew how power, powerful these men were. He knew that these men could jail them because they, they just arrested them. And, and he knew that these men could persecute them. And there's nothing the Roman soldiers could do because they wouldn't even know. But Peter and John are standing. So you would think that Peter and John would be standing, buckled knees, head down. But no, Peter and John are standing head up. Now, now remember, Peter had already denied Jesus. He denied him in front of a lowly peasant girl. Now he's standing in this courtroom in front of these 70 powerful men. And he's boldly, he's boldly standing there. How can that happen? What has happened that Peter now, instead of cowering away, instead of looking at the situation that he's in, not be afraid? How is that? It's by the Holy Spirit. It's all, it's all by the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit is what gave him that boldness. It's all, he says that he was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he said to them, it was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave him that boldness. And the Bible teaches us that the minute that you trust Jesus Christ, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. In, in Ephesians chapter 1, it says that the Holy Spirit seals your salvation. He seals your salvation. And in Peter, Peter uh, 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 knew that he was changed because the Holy Spirit gave him that boldness. And it also says that only those who believe in Jesus are the ones who get the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus had already promised them, already promised them that this was going to happen. In Luke chapter 12, verse 11, Jesus told them, he said that when you are tried in, in front of the synagogue, in front of all these authorities, he told them, do not worry about what to say. And in verse 12, it says, because the Holy Spirit is going to give you the words to, to, uh, to say. You see, we cannot do this by ourselves. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, he directs us. He guides us. He teaches us. He gives us power. We cannot do this by ourselves. It's the Holy Spirit. And and. And I know there's there's some of us. I know uh, Minister Mike Thomas. Uh, I know him and I talked about this. Minister Ed Orr and and and, and uh, Minister Tracy Tiller and, and uh, Kim uh, Johnson. We we talk about how times that we're we're going to preach, and we're at the twelfth hour, and we don't know. Uh, we might not have a conclusion, or we're still trying to work on this uh, sermon. But we get up and preach, and we look back and and, and, and are like. I didn't even know I said that. You know, what's going on? It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will give us the power. The Holy Spirit is already in us. The Holy Spirit guides us and, and directs us. See, the Holy Spirit empowers that I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. The Holy Spirit directs that he that's in me is greater than he that's in the world. The Holy Spirit teaches us that if Christ is with us, no one can be against us. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us that power. And we today can have the same boldness, the same power that Peter had because we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Bold believers are empowered by the Holy Spirit. Number two, number two, a bold believer employs the scriptures. A bold believer employs the scriptures. If we look at verse 11, verse 11, Peter quotes Old Testament scripture. Peter quotes Isaiah 28. Peter says that Jesus is the cornerstone. Now we know that um, um, anyone who knows if they're building a building, I know back in the day, anytime they e erected a building, they would have a ceremony on that cornerstone. And that first stone that's built, we know the foundation is the most important, but the cornerstone is the beginning of that foundation. Christ is our cornerstone. Christ is our foundation of, 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 our, uh, of, of our faith. And Peter, he quotes scripture. A bold believer finds much in this Bible. A bold believer believes in this Bible. A bold believer 
uh, um, 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 studies the word. A bold believer is saturated by the word. A bold believer um, uh, believes in this word. You see, a bold believer knows that this Bible, this Bible is our sword. This, this Bible is our sword because any situation that you're in, that there's scripture that can, uh, that can fight off any situation. There's scripture that can lead you past that obstacle, past that crossroad, past, past that, that, um, th that, that barrier that you are facing. A bold believer knows that this Bible is the truth. Because this, this Bible is without error. This Bible is infallible. This Bible is God breathed. See, a bold believer knows the power of this Bible. You see, the bold believer uses this Bible as a world or as a roadmap and the Holy Spirit as a GPS. See, a bold believer is, is one that can uh, uh, that knows that in Psalms 119 that the word is the lamp of my feet and the light of my path. See, a bold believer uses this word to guide them. You see, a bold believer has has um, has has memorized scripture in their heart. Because they know that they're going to come up with some situations that, that they're going to need to have this Bible help them get through it. See, a bold believer can say, a, a, a bold believer can trust in the Lord with all their heart, lean down on their own understanding, acknowledge him in all their ways, and, 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 uh, and God will direct their path. See, a bold believer know, uh, knows that all things work together for the good who, who, who love God and are called according to his purpose. See, a bold believer believes that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And anyone who believes in it, that will, will not perish but have everlasting life. See, a bold believer recognizes that, that we are all sinful and fall short of, of the glory of God. See, the bold believer says that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me uh, 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 lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me down the path of righteousness for his name's sake. See, a bold believer knows the plan of God, that God's plan is to prosper them, not harm them. And God's plan is to give them hope in the, in the future. See, a bold believer is not anxious about anything. And through prayer and prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, they throw the request to God. See, a bold believer, a bold believer understands that God will not leave them nor forsake them. So they can have boldness and courage. See, a bold believer uses this word and has it implanted in their heart. And, and that's why they can be bold when, when they go and share the word of God. So we have a bold believer is empowered by the spirit. A bold believer employs the uh, scriptures. Thirdly, a bold believer expresses what is sure. A bold believer expresses what is sure. So what's sure? See, sure is something that you know personally. You see, Peter, uh, in verse 20, he, uh, they told him, that you need to stop spreading this word. Stop talking about Jesus. And Peter says in verse 20, for we cannot but speak of the things that we have seen and heard. You see, a bold believer gives personal testimony. A bold believer gives testimony that is of personal knowledge. You see, Peter and John knew Jesus. Peter and John cannot stop about talking about Jesus because Peter and John has seen him rise from the dead. Peter and John has seen him ascend to heaven. Peter and John heard him talk about scriptures about himself. You see, Peter and John saw that the man who was healed was by Jesus' name. So Peter and John had to speak confidently about what they saw and heard. And that's, that, that's, that's like that. See, well, Peter and John knew also Given that personal testimony, they knew that their lives had been changed. They knew their lives had been changed. How do we know that their lives were changed? I already told you that Peter already denied Jesus in front of a lowly peasant girl. But in verse 13, it says that um, in verse 13, the, uh, the high council knew that Peter and John were uneducated and were untrained. So we had these two country bumpkins speaking boldly in front of this highly trained, highly educated council. And, and, and what they said was these were ordinary men and with no, no special talents, no special training. And isn't that like us? We're just ordinary people. We're ordinary people. We are, but the one thing that we have, the extraordinary distinguishing characteristics that we all have, and, and, and this is what it says in verse 13. It says they realized that they have been with Jesus. 
We have Jesus inside of us. That's that extraordinary distinguishing characteristics that we have. Jesus is, is, is with us. And, and we have to understand that we're just ordinary. And God, God does not call the equipped. God equips the called. So God does not call people who are already equipped. He equips those who are called. So you don't have to be a, a pastor. You don't have to be a minister. You don't have to be a leader. You don't have to be a Bible theologian. All you have to do is have Jesus inside of you. That's how, that's how we can uh, uh, um, uh, uh, be just as bold as Peter and John have Jesus inside of us. And isn't that God's plan from the beginning? We, we have to understand that was God's plan from the beginning. Because God's plan from the beginning was not to focus on the best or the powerful or the highly trained. See, God's plan from the beginning was to take ordinary people like you and me and transform our lives by being with Jesus. Now, God's plan from the beginning was, was us being ordinary and, and us being transformed to go share those stories with others so they can be transformed. That's God's plan from the beginning. And, and the beginning was with Jesus. That's what happened with Jesus. Jesus was sitting on all high. And what did he do? He became an ordinary person. And so he could relate to ordinary people. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be imitators of Christ because we're his workmanship. So we are to, to be uh, 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 sharing our personal testimony. Sharing our personal testimony with others. So my, my question is, what is stopping you from sharing your testimony? What's stopping you? Is it because um, you haven't allowed Jesus to transform you? So are you spending time with Jesus? Maybe it's because you uh, lack boldness. God had already given you the spirit of power. Or maybe you're just afraid. Afraid of the rejection. Afraid of consequences. We're, we do not have the spirit of fear. We, you have to go out, be bold, and share what you are sure of, and that's your personal testimony. So we have a bold believer is empowered by the spirit. A bold believer employs the scripture. A bold believer expresses what's sure. And finally, a bold believer, a bold believer emphatically declares the Savior. A bold believer emphatically declares the Savior. We see in verse seven, in verse seven, the council, the, the, the Sahedrin asked Peter, he says, by what power have you, by, he said, by what power, what name have you done this? So Peter standing there, standing there bold, and he tells them, you know, he's using this as his gospel opportunity. He tells them in verse 12, he says, he said, no, there's no salvation. There's no salvation in any other form. There's no other name under heaven that can save you. Peter goes right to the point. He, Peter says that he gives us a clear exclusivity of what salvation is. It's through one name, and that's Jesus Christ. P Peter basically said the same thing that Jesus said in John 14, 6. He said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can get to the Father except through me. Peter makes a point, he makes a, a, a very emphatic, an emphatic claim that there's no other name under heaven that can save you. See, that's one of those scriptures that you should memorize. And, and, we, and we have to stand firm in that. There's a story of an, uh, of an accountant. There's an accountant. And this person um, saw a job, a job uh, uh, posting on, for this real large firm. <clears throat> so this uh, accountant puts in his, uh, his resume, gets a call for the interview, and he's asked a lot of questions. Now, one of the interviewers was the, was the chairperson of the company, of the large firm. So... The last question was from the, from the chairman. So the chairman says, okay, this is the last question I, I have for you. He says, what is three times seven? What is three times seven? So the accountant says 22. And you know, so the, um, so the chairperson goes out and uh, you know, says, okay, you know, th that's it. So the accountant goes outside and he said, Wait, whoa. He said, I think I said 22. So he, he looks at his calculator, three times seven. 21. Oh my goodness. So now this accountant is thinking, I'm not going to get this job. 
So two weeks later, he gets a phone call from the company, from the firm, and they offer him the a job. So the, so the accountant starts work, sees the chairperson one day, and says, hey, um, I'm kind of curious, you know, I missed that last question. And, and, and so the accountant says, why do you still hire me? And the uh, chairperson said, well, you were the closest. You see, God is not interested in closeness. God is interested in one answer. That one answer is Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And, and we have to stand firm on that. You see, because God knows that there's only one God. That that God is the God of creation, the God that, that created Adam and Eve. That God is the God that uh, called out the people of Israel. That God is the God that came down in flesh, which is Jesus Christ. It's the same God that died on the cross that rose again. See, that God is the same God that gave us the, uh, the Holy Spirit. You see, we have to stand firm that God is not Buddha, is not Muhammad. That God is the God, the Father, the God, the Son, the God, the Holy Spirit. And we have to stand firm when, when we're sharing with people who, who is the, uh, the, the uh, reason for our salvation. That's Jesus Christ. Because people, even today, even in the church, people uh, believe that Jesus was the healer. People might believe that Jesus rose from the dead. But the one thing that they will bite you on and they'll fight you for, and even in, in the church, is that there's other ways to salvation. There's no other way to salvation except through Jesus Christ. We've got to stand firm on that. And about the salvation that Peter's talking about. See, Peter is not just talking about a salvation, which salvation, once we die, yes, we are, are, are saved, uh, uh, we, we'll have eternal life. Peter's not just talking about a future salvation. Because we already said in Ephesians 1 that once you trust in, in Jesus, uh, you're given the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the seal of our salvation. See, Peter is talking about a salvation that's right now. Peter is, is saying that we are saved right now. You see, um, and, 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 and it's a right now salvation. It's a salvation that, 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 that we have today. Once you believe in Jesus Christ, you have that salvation today to change the way you live right now, to change the way uh, to set you free right now, to uh, to have you live a wholesome and healthy life right now. You see, our salvation is right now. It's very clear that we have to stand firm and be bold, just like Peter. And it's not a boldness that's an arrogance. It's not a boldness that's conceitedness. It's not a boldness that's an air of superiority. It's a boldness of having an understanding. And, and, and having the confidence that when you're in the midst of a trial, that your almighty God is going to come, not only come to be there with you, but your almighty God is going to come and provide and bring you victory. That's that confidence that Peter had. And, 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 and we have to have that same boldness, that same boldness of Peter, because Peter had that same confidence that Joshua had when, when, uh, when Joshua was promised to lead uh, after Moses. That same confidence that David had when he stood before Goliath. That same confidence that Esther had uh, uh, in going be before the king. It's that same confidence that, that Nehemiah had when he was building the walls of Jerusalem. You see, we have to have that same kind of confidence today. Today in the 21st century, we are in desperate need to be bold and to be courageous. And that boldness and courageous is gonna allow us and enable us to witness for Christ at our homes, at our jobs, at school, in our communities, in our families. We have to be bold. So a bold believer not only uh, um, is empowered by the Spirit, a bold believer not only um, uh, uh, employs the Scriptures, a bold believer not only expresses what's true, but a bold believer is emphatic and declares who Jesus Christ is. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is our salvation. And as I wrap up, see the bold way, the bold way is the biblical way. So we need to, we, we need to be testifying boldly without fear because God does not give us that spirit of fear. And regardless of what type of opposition that you are, uh, are, are going to face, God will bless your words. He will give you the words to say and the Holy Spirit will give you that strength. That strength that you can continue to witness. So all you have to do is just submit yourself to him and let him do all the work. Let him, the Holy Spirit, do all the work. And don't say, I am not a Bible theologian. I am not a teacher of the scriptures. You don't have to be. All you have to do is give your testimony. All of us have a testimony. You have a testimony. And that testimony, uh, uh, see, the, the change in a Christian life is enough proof 
that shows that you have a transformation in Jesus Christ. So you need to give your testimony. And when you give your testimony, tell others how Jesus has changed your life. What did he save you from? And even though you might have some people who might say from other religions and, and they might say that, yeah, you know what? My life has changed also. But there's an eternal difference between them and you. That eternal difference is they're still lost and they're trying to work for their salvation. You see, we ha have been given it freely because of our belief in Jesus Christ. We have been given that salvation freely so we don't have to work. God has given us the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit, he makes the difference. The Holy Spirit gives us the words that we need to say. The Holy Spirit can give you the boldness and courage that you need to live today. And finally, that Holy Spirit gives us the ability to stand for Jesus Christ. So today, as we are preparing ourselves for communion, as you go out and get your, your, uh, your uh, bread and your uh, uh, juice, we need to be just as bold as what, Christ, as what Christ was when he went to the cross. Christ died for all of us. He, and he, his blood was spilled. His blood was shed for the remission of our sins. We all, we all know that we're all sinners, but he still loved us even, even while we were still sinners. He died for us. He was bold. So as you take this bread, we remember it is Jesus' body that was beaten, that was beaten, but he still boldly allowed that to happen because he could have stopped it. He allowed it to happen. So as we eat this, think about the boldness that Jesus had and let his body be broken for us. Let's all eat together. Now this juice, this juice is a representation of the blood, Jesus Christ's blood, not the, the blood, his blood. His blood that he courageously allowed to be shed for us because he knew in order for our sins to be taken away, the perfect lamb had to, had to uh, 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 um, uh, give up his blood. And this is the courage that your Lord and Savior Jesus did by saving you, giving up his blood. Let's all drink, drink together. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Father, there's no more that we can thank you for, Father, for you have given us the perfect gift, which is your son, Jesus Christ. And by us believing in Jesus, having faith in him, we know that you have implanted the spirit, your spirit inside of us, Father. And that's going to give us the boldness that, that Jesus had in coming here, being an ordinary person, relating to ordinary people like us and allow our lives to be transformed. Allow us to, to show the boldness by going out and sharing how your son, Jesus Christ, provides everlasting life. Sharing the gospel. Give us that boldness and that courage, Father, that you've already given us. Power, love, and a sound mind, Father. Allow us to tap into that. God, we know opposition is going to come our way. We see the world, how it is lined up right now, Father. That's, the, that's big opposition, but we know that he that's in us is greater than he that's in the world. We know that, that you are greater than that, Father. So allow us to just uh, 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 jump over these obstacles, bust through these stumbling blocks, Father, and continue just to preach your word, which is, is, is Jesus Christ. Not only did he die for us, but he rose again, Father. And he is the only way, the only way to salvation. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Allow us to be bold to share that, Father. We are bold believers in the 21st century. And there's examples in the first century that, that uh, we can take from. But, but we know that you still and dwell in us, Father. And whatever happens to us, we know is your will. And we'll forever give your son, your son who sits at your right hand, all of our honor, all of our glory. Amen.